Okay, welcome along. We're going to have a quick look at how we are going to model and design and develop our project using CAD, Computer Aided Design Software. Okay, so basically drawing in 3D. So we're going to use something called SketchUp, which has a few different versions, but we're going to use the new online version, the free version. We're going to go to a website to use the cloud-based version, which is my.sketchup.com, and it will bring you to this screen. And we're going to log in using our school details, so your student number at schoolsnet.act.edu.au. You'll come up with a default screen. Let's have a quick look at the mouse, and then we'll start. If I hold down the button, the middle button, which is the wheel, if I click it, it's orbit. I can orbit around my screen and have a look. If I roll the wheel, that's a zoom. Zoom in and out. And it should be shift and click the middle button and that's called pan and that pans up and down and left and about. So we're going to click on the options tab up the top. The three straight lines, horizontal lines. And we're going to go to new model. Now we're going to work in millimetres for this job. The figure is there because predominantly SketchUp is used these days for architectural pre-visualisation and it's a little reference figure. So if I was drawing a house, I would start by um, just roughly sketching it out until I get my details in. And, and I would use a, another package most likely. Um, to draw my, my house in detail. But to start with, I would use something like this because it's quick and easy and I can plan it all out. We're going to work on our pencil case, which is a much smaller job. So I'm going to drag a box around those. They've all gone blue, the, the edges and the faces, and I'm going to press delete on your Chromebook. It would be the backspace. I could also use the eraser. Now, let's look at our interface. We do have a save button, but it should save automatically, but feel free to use it. On the left hand side, we have our toolbar, which is mostly what we'll be using. And then we've got a few options and properties and things, fancy things like materials, which um, we will look at later. We're going to start over here. Now, the things you will need to use, the select, the arrays, we don't need the paint bucket for now the line tool and arcs and we've got our shapes. So basically we're going to start here on our shapes. If I click on shapes, I get a whole range of options from a 3D text, polygon circles and rectangles. And underneath that is our features that we watched in our little video. We've got extrude, which they're called push pull, or, um, follow me, which is like a rotate and offset. Okay. Let's start. Our pencil box will go together like this. We'll draw it in individual parts. Click on the rectangle. You can, by default, it's rectangle. So if I bring it over here, or I can come over here and click rectangle again. Now, you can see how the icons change to a rectangle. It shows me the tool I'm on. I'm going to start from the origin. So I can see my X, Y, and Z here. That should be our 0, 0, 0. I'm going to left click and let go of the mouse bring it in a rectangle and I'm just going to leave my hand off the mouse there okay and I'm going to type 220 comma 13 okay 220 by 13 hit enter now that's my face I've drawn so I'm going to zoom in by scrolling the, turning the wheel and scrolling in okay so that's the rectangle I've drawn is 220 millimeters by 13 millimeters. Technically, this should be 12.7, but I'm not going to go into that 0.3 at the mill. We're going to keep it rounded down, or rounded up. Um, sometimes I'll do 12, sometimes I'll do 13, but it's it's slightly in between. Now we've got a 2D shape. If I orbit around, you'll see that it's flat. Okay. We want to add the third dimension. We're going to add a feature. 
The most commonly used one is that push pull, which in most CAD packages would be called extrude. So I'm going to click on extrude. Okay, I can select a bunch of options here, but the default one is fine. I'm going to bring it over and see how my face goes a, a sort of cross hatched shaded color. Once I'm on there, I'm going to click once and let go of the wheel. Then I'm going to move my mouse. Now, you can see the measurements, the distance down the bottom changing. I could go, you know, bring it up to 65 like that and just left click again. But the quickest way is just to type 65. I don't have to click in that box. I just type it in and hit enter. So I now have my side of my pencil case. Now, there's multiple ways to do this, but I'm showing you the way that, that I would do it. I want to put a little groove in the inside edge that my lid will slide along. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool to do that. So I'm going to click from this corner down here. I'm going to do it really quickly. Um, if I look down the bottom, 220, that's fine by 13. So I'm going to make it 220, 8. I'm going to bring it down 8 mil like that. Now, I might take another rectangle and do another another rectangle on that face, okay? So I'm going to make that 220, comma 3.2. I'm going to make this 3.2. Okay. Because that's the thickness of the saw blade that I'm going to cut with that. Now I'm going to use that extrude again, but instead of bringing that out, I'm going to take it in. Now I clicked once, I'll do that again. So I click once, leave my left finger, goes off the mouse, and I bring it in. If I move my cursor down here, I can see how it clicks into important features. We've got endpoints and we've got midpoints, okay? I could do it up here too. So I could go on this edge, I could go on this edge, which wouldn't do anything, or I could go on that midpoint. And that's roughly what we're going to do. So I'm gonna bring it up here, move it along till it gets that big blue button, and left click. So that's 13 mil, this should be 6.5. Okay, so I've cut it in half. I'm happy with that. That's what our side is going to look like. Now I'm going to go select the little arrow. Left click and drag a box all around. It's all gone blue. I'll zoom around and orbit and have a look. Everything is blue. I'm going to right click on it and make it a component and call it the side. Okay, so watch that again. I'll Control Z, I go push pull, pick that face there, bring it in, move my cursor to the halfway point, midpoint, it tells me what it is. Left click, happy with that. I'm going to drag a box around the whole part. It all goes blue. All my edges, all my faces, all my internal, underneath, everything is blue. That means it's selected. I'm going to right click somewhere on it and scroll down to make component. There are going to be six components in here, or we'll get into that later. You could name them all. I'm just going to call this one side, or you could leave it as default. I'm sure you won't get too confused. However, if I had a assembly made up of hundreds, thousands of little components, naming them would be very useful. So I've got one side. Now, using CAD means I don't have to do a lot of the hard manual work. I can use this to duplicate. Okay, so down here, if I hover slowly, it will tell me that that button there with the four little arrow heads, it's like a little cross and a little plus sign, is move. If I click on move and then grab my part, see how it all goes blue when I hover over? Um, I can move it. Makes sense. I probably am better to grab it by edges, midpoints, intersections, because that makes it easier to lay it out. 
So I'm going to take this end point here. I click once on it. Now I'm going to press control, which gives me a duplicate part. And I'm going to bring it out roughly about here. Now I want to flip that around. I've got the green axis there, the red here, and the blue up. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to look flip along. And I'm going to come down to flip along green. So I've turned it inside out. That's what I want. Now, a lot of the terminology, a lot of the words, a lot of the icons in SketchUp are made uh, simplified. So, whereas a high-end package will talk about um, transformations and things like that, this simply says move. It's trying to be a CAD package that anyone can use. Now, this is the back of our pencil box, and I'm going to use this again. However, if I take this control move it down here and then I'll click on move rotate so this time I'm going to use rotate I'm going to select this now have a look at how the protractor changes green blue and red that's important to keep an eye on those colors and if it isn't one of those colors it means it's not aligned with any of those planes and we're really talking in 90 degrees and perpendicular okay so we want it to stay in those colors. Now, I'm just gonna show you. If I click here along any edge, I can rotate it, okay? So I'll go along and I'm rotating it like that. What I wanna rotate it along is the blue axis. Now, I could just click here or wherever, but I want you to keep in the practice of picking useful points, okay? going to take it along this corner, end point. The compass is blue, that's good. I'll click once, go along this edge somewhere, doesn't matter where, and I'm going to click on the edge. Now I can start moving. You can see my angle changing down there, but I've taken my hand off the mouse and I'm going to type in 90. I'm going to click on this rotate again, and this time I'm going to go to move again. Drag it by this corner. Actually, you know, I'm going to drag it by this corner and bring it up to there. Now, that's not what we want. We don't want a, a square box, okay? We want a rectangle. So, I'm going to change this one. Now, if I double click on it to go into edit mode, Watch that, I've come across here, put my cursor on the part I want to edit, double click, then I can change it. But look, because it's a component, I'm changing everything. I'm gonna escape out of that. So I wanna do something. I wanna take this, select it, left click, right click, and make it a unique part. So now when I double click and edit, it shouldn't change anything. Now this word SketchUp can be good or can be kind of strange for people that have learned to use CAD before. I want to change this so I know that I made it 220 millimeters. I really want my ends to be about 100 millimeters. So I need to think of the difference. I'm going to go push pull. I'll go back into edit, double click, push pull, take the edge drag it along that way towards going into itself and I'm going to type in 120. So that will move that edge relative to where it was 120 mil in. Obviously that means it's going to be 100 millimeters. So I'm going to move this edge out now. I'm going to take the move, drag it by this corner to that corner. So I click on the corner, drag it out and there we go. We've got the back of our box. Now, the front, if I take this part and bring it down here, so I'll take it from this edge, press control, make the duplicate, bring it over here, and of course I need to flip it around, so right click, flip along this time the red, oh, actually, flip along maybe the blue, there we go, no, underneath, control Z.
Okay. If I was to make that in the workshop, there's no way I could slide the lid in. So one of these needs to be brought down to here, so the lid can slide in there. So, once again, I have to right click, make it unique, because it will be different to the back, and double click. Now, there's a few ways I could do this. I'm trying to make it um, nice and easy for you. So what I might do is maybe take that. Let's see if this works. And then I'll push pull. Actually, I'll bring it back out to here. Then I'll use the arrays. And then I'll erase those lines. Then I'll take the push pull, the top edge, and I'll bring it down to there. Now. If I didn't clean up those lines, if I left that groove there, I could still pull it down, but it would only go to that edge, and I'd end up with faces missing and things like that, which is not a problem for me, but I'm trying to make it easy for you so you learn. Control Z to undo. So, have a look what I did. I grabbed that face there, the inner side here, and I brought it out. I'm just going to move around here. So I brought it out. I move my cursor down to this face here and click. So they should be aligned. There'd just be two unnecessary lines there. I'm going to use the eraser. Let's see, eraser tool. Left click and drag across those two lines. And they're gone. Now I'm going to take the push pull, select that face, and bring it down there. Because I made it unique, I haven't affected the back, and I can see where my lid will slide in. If I go around and click, everything is a component, which is useful. Okay, If you are clicking and you're not seeing the whole part go blue, you haven't been making them components. Okay, So over here I'll show you what will happen. If I have two parts here, and I won't measure those out, I draw them, and then I draw on the face here. So I'm not measuring anything, I'm just drawing it out. Okay, you'll end up with a uh, not part. So okay, um, we want to replicate what we do in the workshop. Okay, so we don't build a house by taking a large bit of timber and cutting away what we don't want. We make it in parts, okay? We make our separate parts, and then we assemble it. If I was to do this, if I was to take this, not a component, move it, and let's say I'll, I'll flip it around. So I'll take this and I'll go flip along, green direction, flip along, red direction. Okay, if I was to take that now, and move it into here, and I've got like a rubbish box. Now if I wanted to take a part, I'd have trouble selecting it. And even if I did select it, if I went around and selected each individual face, like that, and then I went to move it, it will stick together. Not good practice, okay? I'm going to delete that. So we have sticky parts if we do that. Now, most CAD packages, these would all be separate little files. But SketchUp, we work in, in one area, which is very, very practical for us. So we're going to put a bottom on, and we're going to make the sliding lid. Let's use a rectangle again. Let's go from this corner to that corner. Now, that's just a single plane, doesn't have any thickness. Let's go to push pull and let's bring it down. So see how I click anywhere along here because that's that's one face. Now if I typed in 13 mil I'd have a 13 mil bit of timber there but we don't want to use regular radiata pine, we want to use plywood. Plywood comes 
3.2 thickness, 1 8th, sorry about the inches and fractions. So I made that 13. I'm going to click on that face, bring it up 10, which will make it 3, and then I'll bring it down 0.2. So that should be 3.2. I need to make it a component so it doesn't stick to everything, get in my way. Double click on it. It's all gone blue. Right click, make component. I'll call it base. Okay. Now let's make the lid. I could, if you want a little challenge, take that, duplicate it up, and then resize it. Or I could do this. I'm going to zoom in here, draw a rectangle on that edge. So I went from this corner to that corner and I'm going to extrude it through. So I'm going to click on that face and bring it through. I'm constantly moving my view around. Now because I was uh, thinking a little bit ahead, I made the depth of my groove half the thickness. So it's easy. I can bring my mouse up here, midpoint. That's fine. Now some of you may want to design a lid that looks like this. Where it is flush here. You'll most likely need a hole here to put your finger through it. So let's quickly I'll double click on there. Draw a circle. And what I can do is come along here find the midpoint, there we go, bring it in along the thread edge, I haven't clicked on anything, now see my dimensions, okay, and I'm going to click once, type in my radius, um, let's say we're using a inch bit, I'm going to type in 13, and then I can cut through to that edge, and I've got a hole that I could then drag it out with, okay? I prefer this type of lid. Double click on here. And actually, we'll take this now and I'll move it over here. I press control to duplicate and I'll show you the type that I would prefer. Right click, make unique. Double click to edit. I want to get rid of that hole, so I'm going to drag a box around it, all the way around it. I've selected all those edges, and I'm going to press delete. Now, I'm going to bring my lift of my lid. Instead of being what we call flush, okay, so that's a flush edge. It's aligned with that. I want it to overhang. There wouldn't look very good if it underhanged. So if it was like this, I don't think it looks very good, like that. So that's called underhanging, and we want it overhang. I started there, so I have to think about how far I want to come out. Um, I'm going to make it really simple and come out another 13. So now I have an overhanging edge. However, I have sharp corners that I want to get rid of. There is an easy way to do that. I'm going to take my rectangle, this corner. Um, I need to go back into edit. So if you've been drawing on things, so if I draw on here, let me show you. If I draw something on there without being in edit mode, then I take this part away. I've just drawn in the same space, not on that object, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that double click on it, press delete, I want to edit, double click, zoom into my corner, take my rectangle, and I'm going to draw a square instead of a rectangle, so I'm going to type in 10, comma 10, I'm going to make a little curve here, a little arc, and there is a, a nice little tool for that, this one here, so let's hit the arc, that one there, and I'm going to start at this corner, bring it up along that edge, click there, and then drag it around. So this is how you did your sugar scoop. And then I'm going to push pull, bring that down to that face there, and hit enter. Now, 
delete these lines. They're unnecessary. I don't need them. What I need to do is work on this corner. I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm going to take my rectangle. Type in 10, comma 10. Use my arc. Start from that axis. Draw it to here. Bring it here. Push pull. And delete those unnecessary lines. So there we go. That's how I would do mine. Okay. That's the pencil box. And you've drawn it up. Now, why do we do it? Let's make some edits. Let's make some changes. Let's say that all the pencils we got this year are longer, bigger. So we need to change 2018's pencil box needs to be bigger than 220. I'm going to double click on this, bring it out an extra 20 mil. Take this piece, bring it out there, double click on here, bring it to that face. I haven't done any measuring, I'm just one thing at 20 mil. Double click on the lid, bring it to halfway, and I'll get that at another 20 mil. Very useful to make minor changes. We don't have to go back and do a lot of editing. It might be that distance there. Maybe there's a. Maybe all these boxes went out and um, people got injured on the sharp corners. We could do the same to this corner as we've done there. Round it over. Maybe Smiggle is going to order a million of them and they need to be thinner. They need to be made out of oh, 10 mil material. So bring that in 3 mil, 10 mil material this year. Okay, we can make all our changes in our CAD software and we don't have to be thinking and wasting time in the workshop. We want to come up with our design and follow through with that instead of the expense of spending time producing things in the workshop, which is what you want to do. However, not very practical when we have limited time okay so this is our CAD project I want you to work through it at your own pace pause it when you need to pause it go back re-watch your step don't automatically put your hand up just slow down pause rewind slow it down watch it three times watch it ten times it doesn't matter that's what the idea of making these videos is okay Let's have a go in class now. Thank you for watching.